grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And welcome to this service of the longest night, also called a Blue Christmas service. This is a special online video worship service from the Wrightsville United Methodist Church in Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina. I'm Pastor David Haley, one of the associate pastors at the church, and it's my joy to welcome you to this service today. Christmas is a time filled with joy for many people, but not for everyone. Some of us have suffered a loss during this past year. Many of us have grown weary as we come to our third Christmas with COVID. We're tired of masks, of social distancing, and inflation. Others of us associate the Christmas season with a loss because it was at this time of the year that we lost family members and loved ones. For still others who have lost a relationship or health, a job, or had a financial setback, it may be a time of pain, confusion, or fear. This is not a joyous season for everyone. Whatever your situation, if you're not feeling the joy of the season, then this service is especially for you. Let us pray. God of mercy, hear our prayer in this Advent season for ourselves and our families who live with painful experiences of loss. We ask for strength for today, courage for tomorrow, and peace for the past. We ask these things in the name of Christ who entered the world at Christmas to share our life in sorrow and joy, in death and new birth, in despair and promise. Amen. And now 
we turn to the scriptures for our word from God for tonight. The scripture reading is from Psalm 30, verses 1 through 5 and verses 10 through 12. I will exalt you, Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. Lord, my God, I called to you for help, and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down to the pit. Sing the praises of the Lord, you, his faithful people. Praise his holy name, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Hear, Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, that my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. Lord, my God, I will praise you forever. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our midst that our hearts might be prepared to hear your word. May your anointing be upon the one who preaches that his sins might not hinder your word. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Well, here we are, closer and closer to Christmas. Christmas is supposed to be a season of joy. It's a time we reflect upon the heavenly hosts singing peace on earth and goodwill to men. Even the world joins in with Christmas lights and parties and singing songs like have a holly jolly Christmas. Holly is indeed pretty, but it also has sharp prickly leaves. And for many, they do not see the beauty in Christmas. All they feel is the stabbing pain. They're more likely to sing blue Christmas rather than white Christmas. And this is because there's so many people in pain. Some have suffered from illness personally or in the family. Some have lost their spouses to death. Some have lost other family members. I recently lost my beloved dear oldest sister. Some have experienced other losses in the pandemic. Many are alarmed at political and world events, and these things weigh heavy on our holiday. It's hard to put on the expected joyful face when we are in grief. Problems with the message of Christmas are not new. The famed poet Henry Wadsworth Longfellow wrote a Christmas carol called I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. And he mentions that they played all the familiar carols. They proclaimed the message of peace on earth. And yet Longfellow was troubled with the fact that he could not find any peace on earth. There was so much war. Uh, he writes in the carol, there is no peace on earth. I said. Edmund Sears echoed this in the familiar carol, It Came Upon the Midnight Clear. The message of the angels struggling to be heard among the competing voices of the world, and he longed for the day that the message of peace on earth and goodwill to men might be as clearly heard as the starry night sky. Vincent Van Gogh, the famed artist, painted, uh, perhaps uh, his most famous painting, Starry, Starry Night. Now, he was a man who was raised in the church, and he heard the carols of Christmas. And yet, in all the field of stars, he struggled all his life to find the Christmas star. What tragic grief he suffered. He couldn't live with it. So how do we resolve the message of the first Christmas in light of skeptics and all the losses that we have felt. Well, first of all, it's appropriate 
to be honest about our feelings rather than just saying what we ought to say because grief and loss are real. Now let's acknowledge this. And if we have occasion to celebrate Christmas without these burdens, let's be sensitive to others who are grieving. Let's not be their mockers, but rather their encouragers. The Christian faith truly has the answer to death. Even those who are in deep grief and walking through the valley of the shadow of death can realize this. Let's take time to sit with them in their grief and listen. The Lord will work this out in due season. Let's remember that even Jesus took time to weep at the tomb of Lazarus. And this was in spite of the fact that he already knew he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead. In that story, we find the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. It's also one of the most profound. But the time will come when the joy will be restored and the songs of Zion played again. And that's certainly the message of our scripture from Psalm 30 that I read just a moment ago. Weeping may stay for the night, but joy comes in the morning. And you turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Unfortunately, loss is a real part of life in this fallen world in which we live. Death is an inescapable reality that robs our loved ones from us and eventually steals us away from our loved ones. Sometimes our sadness cuts very deep when the joy of others in Christmas becomes for us a painful reminder of deep losses. But thanks be to God, the ultimate message of Christmas is hope. As we celebrate the birth of Jesus, the hope of the world, Jesus says in John 16, these things I have spoken to you that in me, you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Longfellow does find resolution for his distress, and I heard the bells on Christmas Day. He writes, God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail, with peace on earth, good will to men. The ultimate message of Christmas is a message of hope that things will be better. He finds peace with the final peace on earth, goodwill to men. While realizing that the world is quite blue, it is our calling to offer the true message of the season. Jesus joined us in our sorrows. He came down from heaven and dwelt among us. He was personally acquainted with grief and loss and sorrow. He came to save us from our sin and to bring us unto him. So let's preach this message, for this is the way to peace and the favor of God resting upon us. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. We light this first candle to remember those persons who have been loved and lost. And we pause to remember their names, their faces, their voices. We give thanks for their memory. May God's eternal love surround them. We light this second candle to redeem the pain and loss the loss of relationships, the loss of health, the loss of jobs, the loss of financial security. As we gather up the pain of the past, we offer it to you, O oh God, asking that into our hearts you place the gift of peace. We light this third candle to remember ourselves this Christmas time. 
We pause and remember the past weeks, months, and for some of us, years of down times. We remember the pain of memories, the grief, the sadness, and the hurts. Let us remember that dawn defeats darkness. The fourth candle is lit to remember our faith and the gift of hope that God offers to us in the Christmas story. We remember that God who shares our life promises us a place and time of no more pain and suffering. Let us remember the one who shows the way and who goes with us into our tomorrows. Thank you so much again for joining us for uh, this service of the longest night. And certainly our prayer is that you will find peace and joy in this Christmas season through the message of hope that we receive in the celebrating the birth of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And now may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.